our topic for today is section 1.5, which is number systems and circuits for addition. So first let's uh, uh, start with the theorem. The theorem 1. Theorem 1.51 says the following, let B be an integer greater than 1. Then every positive integer n can be written as n equals a k b to the k plus a k minus 1 b to the k minus 1 plus a1 b plus a0 where k is an integer in z let's say in z plus uh, z plus u uh, no, there's a k is a positive integer non negative Be zero also. Integer. And then a zero, a one to a k are also non negative integers. A less than v, that's very important. And what else? And a k is different from zero. So what is this theorem really telling us? This theorem actually is foundation um, for our representation of a number n in base b. So we start with a positive integer n, and you express it in terms of base b. So as basically a linear combination of powers of b. The lowest power you start with is b to the zero, so b is missing, then you go with the higher and higher power, and the highest power that appears is actually k, that's why we insist here that k, a k is not different from zero, so you cannot start with coefficient zero. And by the way, this representation is unique. This is very important. Uh, we are not going to prove this theorem, although we can, uh, but uh, generally a couple of more comments. This looks like basically like polynomial in B. So generally n is represented as a polynomial in B, but your coefficients are integers that are less than B. And we'll be particularly interested in the binary, binary representation And that's when b equals 2. By the way, b is the base. So in the first half of the lecture, we want to see uh, how to apply this theorem in a particular setting. How can we manipulate numbers in the other bases, of course, the standard base that we are all used. Uh, 2 is base b equals 10. And then we want to use the same, actually, uh, mechanism that we use in base 10 for other bases and see how is that adjusted. Most of you already had experience with this in your computer science courses. So here is example 151 and it says write 458 in binary notation. So there are different algorithms to do this. I will just go uh, using the highest powers possible. So I'll go from higher powers toward the smaller ones. As I said, there are all the alternatives 
um, alternative mechanism. So powers of two, because that's what we want since it's binary. So we want powers of two, and here they are, one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and we stop there. Why? Because the next one is 512, and we don't have enough of those 512s. So basically, like in elementary mathematics, you just look what you have in certain room, whatever's left, if you don't have enough for one digit, one extra uh, value of the digit in that room, you just go to the next room and see the value of that. So what we do here is say the following. So 458 is 256 plus whatever's left, which is 202. And that gives you, on that digit place, it gives you the value 1. So what do we do here? Do we have 128, which is the next one? The answer is yes. So we got 126 plus 128 plus 74. 74, yeah. Then we look for the next one. Do we have 64? Yes, we do. So we got 256 plus 128 plus 64 and plus 10. And then what happens? We do have 256, 128, 64, but then we don't have any 32, it's not enough for 32. We only skip 16, the best we can get is 8. So we have 8 plus 2, it's always that first part, last part needs to be treated further, and actually 2 is the power. So what we do now, it's probably easier, I'm not sure how much is my k, so that's why it might be a little easier to do it backwards, but I like to do two by two so that I don't just lose track of where I am. So here it is. How many ones do we have? We have none of them, so we'll put zero here. Actually, our a zero coefficient is zero. Do we have twos? Yes, so we put one. Do we have fours? No, so we put zero. Do we have eights? Yes, we do. Do we have sixteens? No, we don't. Do we have thirty-two? Don't. Do we have 64? Yes. Do we have 128? Yes. Do we have 256? Yes. So this is the binary representation of our number. So generally it says that we have how, how, how much is our k? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So our k is 8. And then this is in that representation. 8, 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 8, 0. So that's the representation. Um, all right, uh, let me do another problem. Oh, by the way, yes, uh, sometimes when you just write this, it's a good idea to write in the index what is the base that you use, because sometimes that information might be lost. What else? How about the other way around? So next example, if you have base 2, how do you go into base 10? You actually, that's even easier. You just record all those members that are present. So, 152. You want 101, uh, 011 in the base 2, and you want to. I represent this at the base 10. So what do you do whenever there is something? So there, are, there is single, yes, this is value 2. There are no 4s, there is 8, there is 16, there's no 32, there is 64, and that would be 91. It's base 10 when the base is 10. I'm going to write it, that's a default base. All right, then how do we perform basic arithmetic operations in different bases? Let's say 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, as I said in base 10. We execute things the same way as in base 10. The only thing is that basically uh, that uh, each uh, place is, uh, it has value 2 
comparing to the next one and not value 10. It's not tw 10 times bigger, it's twice bigger. So what happens here, whenever we can subtract, we subtract normally. If we don't, we say we borrow or we actually do with the uh, change. So what? I cannot do 0 minus 1. So what I'll do, I'll borrow from the next line. So this will be 0. So, and, I, and I'm having, let me do it, although, although this is somewhat illegal. So 2, this system doesn't know what the digit 2 is. But basically when you trade 1, then you switch into 2. So 2 minus 1 is just 1, so everything is legal now. Actually, the easiest way is basically what? Since when you, uh, you only need uh, to, um, to borrow when you have 0 minus 1. So in that case, the answer is always 1. So whenever you borrow, put 1. So 0 minus 0, no need to borrow. Do I borrow here? Yes. So generally, what will be the result? So here I have 0 here this guy is used to borrow and then the result we said is always a 1. Again I need to borrow so I make this into 0 and then when I subtract here is 1 and that's it, nothing ahead. So it's 1101 one, one, oh, one, actually. Alright. Uh, sorry, it's not one here, it's a zero here. All right. Uh, no, I, no, it is one. That's from the fourth line. Sorry, I mixed up with the next problem. It was good, it was good. But now, uh, let's look at the problem 154. This, one, this is a very important problem. It's not just exercise. We need uh, to develop a trick that will be very useful later on. So it will be 100 zero zero minus zero 0101. Zero one. So please pay attention what's so special here. The special thing is that this number has a very special structure. Starts with 1 and has all the zeros below. So basically, uh, in order to make this a little closer, this idea, let me, before I even do that problem, do something similar in base 10. Let's say when I subtract 1000, when I subtract 573, what a problem. I need to borrow all the time because all these digits are weak for 573. And here is a beautiful trick what you can do to get rid of that borrowing all the time. You do the following. Write this as 999 plus an extra one. And now subtract 573. And why is that perfect? Now all my digits are my bases are loaded. So I will never need to borrow again. Basically what I do, I just go to the complement. Complement 3 with respect to 9 is 6. 7 to 9 is 2. 5 to 9 is 4. Don't forget that 1 that we removed in the beginning. So I get 427 very quickly. You just complement every digit and add that 1. Actually, that's a very powerful trick that we'll use all the lecture long today. So what we'll do here, the same thing. I'll go to the complement, so I'll go 0, 1, 1 to have all the bases loaded, plus that extra 1. Now when I subtract, what will happen? What will happen is that basically, um, always when you sub... Uh, there, there's no... So, since I have fully loaded, when you make a complement here, complement of 3 was 6, complement of 7 was 9, complement of 5 was 4, here it's much more unique. If you have 1, since top is always 1s, if you have 1, you will get 0 here. If you have 0, you will get 1. So basically you always go to the opposite. So whatever you have here, you just go to the opposite. So 1 goes into 0, 0 goes into 1, 1 goes into 0, and of course you're plus 1, the same idea. So you get 0, 1, 1. 
This is the idea called the two complement. So please make sure that you understand this construction because we'll need it all day long when we start doing circuits for addition. So very important idea, as I said, it's used when your first number uh, actually is that special number with the one on certain place and all the other zeros. So you go with the two complements. All right. Uh, what about uh, the other representation? Yeah, sometimes, although we'll mostly do binary, sometimes you need octal representation or other representation with, uh, with base 12. So here is example 155. They ask us to do octal representation four fifty eight in base eight. So what do we do? We look at the basis of eight. So we have one as base zero eight sixty four and I will need five and twelve because this is too big for 5 to well, so what we do, we divide by 64, so we get 458, is, is, do I have 7? Yes, 7 times 64 plus 10, I think. And then what do I do? It's 7 times 64, 10 is 1 times 8 and plus 2. So my representation is 7, 1, 2 in the base 8. Although, since 8 is a power of 2, here is another way how we can do it. We already did 7, uh, 458 in the previous example. 458, if you remember, in base 2 was 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So basically, every three digits, because 8 is 2 to the third, so every three digits in base 2 actually are worth to one digit in base 8. Every block, so generally here it is. So when you look at this as 0, 1, 0, that's just 2, because 1, plus 1, 2, so that would be 2. What is this? 0, 0, 1 is just uh, 1, and then 1, 1, 1 in base 2 is 7, actually, in, uh, in, uh, in base 10 or in base 8, the same thing. So here is your 7, 1, 2 in base 8. So generally, if one base is the power of the other, then representing the blocks, you can go from the finer representation into the coarser one, or the other way around. From coarser one, they represent 7 in base 2, 1 in base 2, 2 in base 2, and you will go from coarser toward finer. All right, so that's basically the story about different bases. And then what, uh, for example, they ask us here to, uh, 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 so what happens if your base is bigger than 10, then you need more digits. Because in base 8, I had no problems. I just used digit 0 to 7, and I don't use 8 to 9, and it's all good. But if I had base, for example, 16, then I would need to invent a new digit. So then we go 0, 1, 2, 9, and then you go A, B, C, D, E, F, I think. So this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We need 10, 12, 16 digits. So for example, when we write the numbers like this. So what is the number 7, A, 3, E in the base 16? What is the meaning of this? And you say the following, all right, so the lowest power is e, so it just goes the way it is. And, and by the way, uh, what is the value, or, or let me write it first. So, so, so what is e? Value of e in base 10, this is what? 
This is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you will get for E, you will get 15 plus 3 times 16 because it's a place 1. Like 10th uh, digits, but 16th digits. Plus then A times 16 squared, but A is 10. And then finally 7 times 16 cube. So just according to the place, you read which power of 16. So, so just no powers of 16, just one. Power 16, 16 square, 16 cube. No power, power 16, 16 square, 16 cube. And then you read the digits the way they are. Although if digit is just standard one, you read it the way it is. If it's a letter, you just recognize it. And when you calculate all of this, you will get... Oh, I didn't ask. I actually asked for the binary expansion. Uh, what would be the value of this one? You, you, uh, you will calculate it yourself. Uh, how would you do, uh, do this in the binary expansion? So, so this would be in base 10 when you finish the calculation. If you want this in the binary extension, what do you do? The same trick as a minute ago, but now since 16 is 2 to the 4th, you, each of your digits becomes block of 4, like this. So what E itself is 14, but 14 in base E in base 8 is 14 in base 10. I use a few bases, so I better be pre precise about it. So how much is 14 in base 2? You have uh, 8, you have 4, and you have 2, and you don't have 1. So it's 1, 1, 1, 0. That was who? That was E. Then a number 3, we know that. That's 0, 0, 1, 1. And then number A, number A is 10, so that would be 1 and no 4s, 1, 2, and then no numbers, 8 and 2, 10. And finally 7 has no 8, but it does have 1, 4, it has 1, 2, and it has 1, here it is. This would be a representation. And then obviously since this is 0 here is, should be actually raised because number cannot start with 0. So here is your binary representation. All right. So uh, now we want to go to the second part, and that is uh, how do we write the circuits for addition? Let me raise the board and start discussion. So we need to develop two things. One is how to add individual digits and then how to add the numbers in the we'll use binary representation. So we talk about circuits for addition. We'll use binary representation. And first we'll talk about the way uh, to add individual digits. So here is the idea. First we want to develop a circuit for something called half adder. What would that circuit do? We would like something that does the following. Uh, when I add two digits, I'd like uh, to add uh, to add them. But if, if of course, if it goes above uh, the value of the base, then I want to carry to the next part. So what happens? I, I, I want to talk about how do I add if I have zero and zero. If I add 0 and 1, if I add 1 and 0, if I get 1 and 1. Then I have two outputs. One is called the sum and one is called the carry. Sum is what you write and carry is what you carry to the next uh, place value. So when I add 0 and 0, I get 0, there's no carry. If I have 0 and 1, I get 1. There's no carry. 1 and 0 is 1. And there's no carry. 1 and 1. That's too much. I cannot write 2, so what do I do here? I write the value 0, and then I carry 1 in the higher place value. Like, like when you have I know, 7 and 6, that's 13. You write 3, and you carry 1 in the next line. So uh, uh, it is a little simpler in the 0, 1 case. So I would like something, some circuit, that uh, that does this. 
so uh, so what so what would uh, that be so uh, for the carry it's very it's very simple this is just the PNQ why because it, it says uh, it is one only if both of them are one so that's easy to construct what about this one this is exclusive or for the sum so if you remember it's one if one of them is um, true one of them false or the other way around if both of them are false or both of them true I get zero and that's it so now I and that's what half header is uh, so what you do is here which you get P here are your inputs they could be zero or one then what you do so so first uh, you do um, the carry so you take P you get Q and then you just have and get and that's your carry so that's one output and then the other output will do what we need, need to put exclusive or so what is exclusive or I don't know if you ever wrote it precisely so P plus Q is what is P and not Q or not P and Q so one of them to be correct so generally what we'll do here um, we'll just pay, uh, take P and not Q so from here we'll take inverter will bring P the way it is and that will give us what end then we have another end here where what P, P will now go to inverter so I'll bring P here to inverter on P here it is and Q will be connected normally so here it is so then I have both pieces, now I just do OR. And here is my sum. Here it is. So what will this circuit do? It has two inputs, P and Q, that are 0 or 1, and it has two outputs, one for the carry, one for the sum, and generally it does what we want once again, sum to be what we would normally do when we have numbers, and carry also the same thing. But this is designed just to deal with two inputs. So when we add two digits, here is what we do. We produce carry and the sum. So this is called half adder. Everybody carry this? Good. Let's now do the full adder. Why? Because we need to consider a situation that now we add three digits. Why? Because we have two digits that we read, but one might be carried from the previous line. So at the end, we need to add three digits. So what do we do here? We use this and pull now the full adder. So what we do here, we are actually, we are using three inputs, P, Q, and R. So what then, when we add, when, oh, when we add uh, three numbers, here's what, here's what we'll do. We feed P and Q into half adder, and I'm not going to explain it here, it's just black box everything that was on the previous board so I assume that I have half header so what will that half header do it will give me uh, the carry and it will give me the sum maybe I should label them C1 and S1 because there will be different carries and sums later on so what do I do then because I'm, I'm in the same room and in the same room where S1 is R1 comes. So I go S1 and R1 and R, sorry, and, and I use half header again. And that will give me what? It will give me another carry. And it will give me another sum. Okay? 
the same way we explained it before, because this is just digit 0 or 1, this is 0, 0, 1, how you got it doesn't matter, I'll use my half header, and that will produce carry and the sum. And here is the final decision, and this is important, that it needs little thinking for a moment. So, that sum, I'll, I'll just continue, that's my final sum. So, what that second addition produces for the printout, I'll print that. And then for C1 and C2, here is something a little interesting and worth discussing. For them, I will just do R. And that will be my final carry. So at the end of the day, I produce some, what I print out, I produce carry that goes to the next part, and that's it. I think that this is all fairly obvious. The only problem is this OR on C1 and C2. Why? Because if you remember, we would kind of need exclusive OR. Because if these are both zeros, OR will give me zero as I want. If this is one, this is zero, it will give me one as zero, one. The only trouble is, what if these are both ones? But that case that would trouble us can never happen. Why? It's not completely trivial, but, but it's not too complicated. Here is the story. If you have, if this one is one, this one cannot be one. Why? Because if you produce one in the first stage, then that means your S1 must be zero. Because how do you get one here? Adding one and one, you have one zero, and then your sum is exhausted. So if you have carry here, the sum is zero. So next time, this is too exhausted, it cannot produce carry again. So you cannot produce carry twice, either on the first stage, either on the second, you cannot do it on both. So that's why this is not prob prob problematic at all. So generally, uh, it will exactly do what you want with the three numbers. It will exactly do what you want. It will produce the sum to print out and carry to carry on the next line. So generally, this is kind of recursive algorithm that you use to add up any two-digit number. So for example, like 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, 1. So what you do is actually the following. On one and one in the beginning, you just use half header, you get your sum, your sum is zero, and your carry is one. And then here you use this full header, so one, one, and zero. At the end, with all this goes, it will produce a zero, and again carry one. And then again, here you apply full header, it will produce what? Because you have three inputs, and you feed them on PQ and R. And then you get what the zero again, I'm sorry, zero again, and uh, carry. Am I correct with this? Hopefully I am, one zero. One and one is zero, and I have carry, I get zero, and I have carry again, I have zero, and I have carry, so I have zero, and I have carry one, since there's nobody there. You do this. So here it is. Yeah, I, I kind of, though, yes, I actually chose the zero complement or two complements, so that's why, why I got such a nice number. So that's the idea. So this gives us a chance to kind of uh, uh, present, uh, to add uh, binary numbers a repeat, with the repeating use of, or recursive use of this full adder algorithm. So, uh, now I want to, uh, to discuss another issue, and that's a very interesting um, uh, trick, and that is, this all works if you deal with positive numbers, and the question is, how do you deal with negative numbers? And it's a very intelligent way, very deep and intelligent idea. So, how to deal with negative numbers? So here's the idea. We'll represent this idea uh, in uh, using the 8-bit representation of numbers. So here is 2, then 4. So just for numbers that could be represented in 8 bits. So 
just eight digits, so that means we cannot represent big numbers. So basically, if I go with eight digits, the, the biggest, if I put all ones here, I'll get 255. Okay, because that would be what? Uh, 128 plus 64 plus blah 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 and that will be 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 6 and so on and that's exactly what we have there but here is a very nice idea actually we are not going to use all 255 numbers we, we, we won't try to represent all because this would represent all the numbers n that go from 0 to 255 but what we will do, we will split the range between 0 and 255 into two pieces. We'll use 0 to 127 to represent positive numbers, and then we'll use numbers 128 to 255 to represent the negatives. So they are not negatives, they are positives because we only, we using adders, we can only represent positive numbers. You, uh, you cannot have negative signal there. So the idea is to use positives to encode the negatives. And basically what will happen, every, and so number like negative k, where, where k is between 0 and 128, number negative k will be represented with 256 minus k. So for example, negative 1 will actually be represented with 255, negative 2 with 254 and so on, and then negative 128 will be represented by, uh, by 128. So 128 will be reserved for negative 128 because we don't need 128 for positives. You end up with 127. So with this trick, we will be able to represent all the numbers between negative 128 and uh, 127. And generally, the question is, you can say, OK, but how will the operations work this way? So generally, First, let's learn how to quickly, instead of subtracting from 256, how to find a binary representation of a now, not negative, but code of a negative number. So we'll use that two representation that we discussed before, but let me make sure that I have it here in a more serious setting. So here it is. We say the following. Fine. So uh, example one, find it find the two complement of 67. By the way, that binary number will represent, it will represent negative 67. So, so what do I do? We start with 67. We represent 67 in binary code. And let me just copy that. I'm not going to repeat it. So 67 is like this. So here are the blocks. Blocks are 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And since I'm subtracting from 256, generally what I'm doing is the following. To complement, we do the following. That represents negative 7. I cannot say maybe equal, but it's represented with the following. So when you do two complements, here's what you do in the way we explained it before. You just switch every digit to the opposite. So 0 becomes 1, 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1, 0 becomes 1, 0 becomes 1, 0 becomes 1, 0, 0. That's that two complement. Look at that previous part of the video where we explain where is that coming from. But you remember on the side, we put an extra one so that things work nicely. So you need to add that one at the end. So we get one, zero, one, 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 zero, one. And this number will represent a negative number. Actually, the easiest way to recognize a negative number is that that digital spot number eight from the bottom or first one but you must have all the digits. First the digit is one. So negative numbers are numbers whose starting digit on the highest place is one. And that's it.
So that's how we represent negative numbers with actually with binary in in this uh, eight bit representation. We represent them with, uh, as numbers that start with one always, and that's always a sign that your number is uh, representing negative. It's not negative itself; it's just encoding negative. But it's interesting how this encoding. Uh, is uh, uh, compliant with the operation. So now I, I want to show you how to use this to add up positive and negative numbers. And I'll do a couple of cases. You can read the others um, from the notes. So here it is. Uh, example 1510. They say using 8-bit representation Presentation add 37 plus 55. Oh, by the way, uh, your result cannot, not only that numbers cannot exceed 127 or 128, but even the result cannot exceed it because then you cannot represent it because all, all uh, numbers above 128 are reserved. So here's what you do. I'm going to just copy from my node binary representation, so 37, and then show how to use them. So 37 is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Then you represent 55, the, the way we explain, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And then what? Actually, since we said the number, their sum will be below 128, basically we'll just get a positive number below up to 127, everything will work perfectly well. Just add them up, no troubles. 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1. 3 ones is 1, carry 1. 1 and 0 is 0, 1. 0 and 1 is 1, 1 and 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 and 0 is 1 and 0. Make sure that you write all the digits, even if it's missing, because it will confuse you if your number starts with 1. If, you don't, if I don't write the 0, I see all 1 in the start, that means it's negative. No, it's not. So here it is. This is the sum. And then I just interpret what that sum is. No numbers, no 2s. There is a 4, there is an 8, there is a 16, and there is 64. So all together, this is 80, this is 92, as it should. But I didn't cheat here, I just recognized the number as 92. So there's nothing special here. Here is what I want you to see. Example uh, 1511. I better erase this. I hope everything is okay with that. So 3511, 1511, I want to add 37 plus negative 55. So here it is. I still use 37 the way it was. A minute ago, because it was the same number, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, 55 was, we had that a minute ago as well, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's in base 2. So, negative 55 in this code will be what? What do I do here? To get negative 55, I'll switch 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and then I'll add 1, so I get 1 here. So my result will be 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's negative 55. Then what will happen when I add them up? I'll just add them normally. I don't care who's positive or negative. I'll just do full letter step by step. 1 and 1 is 0. Carry 1. 1 and 0 is 1. 1 and 0 is 1, 1 and 0 is 1, 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 0 is 1, 0 and 1 is 1, 0 and 1 is 1. That's it, but, you know, you, my user doesn't want to see that. My users do not care about binary numbers. They want the result like a normal one from the calculator. So, I need to interpret it for them. But you cannot interpret it the way it looks. You see that it's negative. It represents a negative number. So, in the, so now you don't need to recognize it in operation. So how do you recognize it? You find it's a complement, a zero complement, to recognize that positive number, and you know to attach a minus. So a recognizer works like this. Switch. So we get 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 
but so two components, so uh, two components. But don't forget one. So this is zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero. I hope I did it correctly. Two ones, looks good. So what is this number? That's not my result. This is the result to help me to recognize this guy. So this is what? No ones, there is a two, there's no four, there's no eight, there is a 16, so this is the 17. So my recognizer is 17, but that's not my result. My result is the opposite of it. So I know now this 17 tells me that then that number is minus 17. Is that correct? Oh, I should get minus 18. Oh, sorry, this is not, the, this is 2 plus 16. It's not on the last page, of page, so it's 18. Okay, our arithmetic is better. So, so that's how the recognition works. Uh, what happened here, what else did I want to comment? So some people do it maybe a little nicer writing, and that writing says the following. They say the following, so that might be a little better writing. I said, all right, this number, I know it's negative. It's a negative A. And then later on you say A is this. So our result is negative A equals negative 18. So don't say this is, this is my sum. Of course not. It's negative, and that's it. And just one more case, there are two more cases, but just one is worth mentioning. So what happened here, I'll go uh, a negative, negative 37 plus 55. So that's 5, 1, 12. So negative 37 and plus 55. What happens there? It will be very similar, so let me keep 37 and 55 the way they are. Here is the trick. When I switch negative 37, then I get 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. I add 1. So that 1 and 0 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Let me see if that's correct. My negative 37. 1, 1, 0, 1. 1. 0, 1, 1, 0, no, something wrong. I switched here. One one zero one one. No, sorry, yeah, 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 there's something wrong. And 30, is my 37 okay? 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. When I switch 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Zero. I add one. Oh, I added it wrong. Sorry. This is plus. Zero and one is one. I copy one. Zero, one, one, zero, one. Zero and one is one. Uh, yes. So this one is just car. Well, I have problems with addition. Zero and one is one. I copy one. I copy one zero. I copy zero one. I copy one one. One one zero one one zero one one. That's good. So that's negative thirty seven. So I go fifty five, and then so I go negative thirty seven plus fifty five. So that would be one one zero one one zero one one fifty five is zero zero one one zero one one one. And here's something interesting. That will happen. One and one is zero. I have a carry one and a carry zero and a carry zero and a carry one and a zero and a carry zero and a carry zero and a carry and one. Let me check calculation again. One zero zero one zero zero one zero. Yes. But here is the trick. Suddenly, I got an extra digit on place nine, and that's not allowed. That digit is called overflow, you just disregard it. It looks strange in mathematics, you got scale. Because the reason why that overflow shows up is because you are adding a 256 minus A, 256 minus B, and sometimes this 256 makes it too big, or just B. 
So then number goes above 256, but that just because of that artificial adding of 256 doesn't influence your calculation. So if you get one on digit nine, on, on place nine, just disregard it and interpret your result. So what's this result? When you cross the one, it starts with zero, so it must be positive. Just read it and be done. So what would that be? So one on two, uh, two. No fours, no eight, yes on 16, so get two plus 16, which is 18, exactly as we want it. As I said, the reason why that overflow happens because you use 256 minus 37, and those two numbers nicely gave you 18, this was your overflow, and doesn't hurt our calculation, it just appears, you disregard it, it's not part of the result, it's just part of our scaffolding and, uh, and it's absolutely legitimate to disregard it there. That's what we have in this longer session number system and circuits for addition.